Welcome into another episode of The Sandbox. I'm your host, Justin Peters, and today we are going to be talking about relationships. And I have someone special and important to me coming on the podcast today. Her name is Gabby Dimeke, uh, the one and only, my partner in crime. So recently we hit a big milestone in our relationship. We had our one year anniversary, if you're listening in real time, was July 21st, 2020. So um, I'm really excited about that and we have a long way to go, I know. It might not seem like a huge accomplishment maybe for those uh, couples that have been together, been married for you know, 5, 10, 20, 30, 40 plus years. I really admire those relationships. I want to have a, a meaningful, long lasting relationship just like that. But I'm also really excited about where Gabby and I are right now. We've had an incredible last year together. I feel like I'm more connected to her than ever. And I'm really excited about what the, the future holds for, for us. So I thought I'd mix things up, do something a little bit different in today's episode and have more of a discussion, less of an interview with Gabby. Uh, we're going to recap a few things about our last year, some of the things that we learned about each other. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the things that we're still working on as a couple. And then we're going to share some of the things that have been working for us and our relationship with uh, the hope that maybe if you're struggling in your relationship with something similar, that one of our strategies uh, might work for you as well. So I'm hoping that you can gain something meaningful out of this conversation. And I'm really excited to give you guys a little sneak peek into Gabby and the awesome, amazing uh, relationship that we have. So I hope you enjoy today's episode with Gabby Dimeke. What's up, babe? How are you doing? Hi. <laughs> Welcome into the sandbox. I appreciate you making what your third cameo on this. I think so. I did. I talked on Jeff and Abby's. Uh -huh. We talked a little bit about relationships and then the calendar club. So yeah, third time's a charm. Nice. And uh, at some point in time, I'll give you your own spotlight episode. Uh, but today, I want to talk about relationships with you. Because surprise, surprise, we have made it almost to a year. Next week is our one year anniversary. So how do you feel about that? I honestly can't believe that we even dated for a year officially <laughs> in public. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> What do you mean by that? We just, uh, for people that know, like we just had such a long road in our relationship, just even meeting and then kind of a long journey to even coming to a point where we decided to date. So I wanted, for people that don't know, I wanted to date you for a really long time. <laughs> and then I finally convinced you, as I like to tell people. Um, and so, yeah, it's weird and cool to be on the other side of it and be like, Okay, wow. We're a year in. Forever to go. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Um, a year in. The, the year seems like it's gone extremely slow and extremely fast all at the same time, which is kind of crazy. Like I said, I, I can't believe that we've already been dating for a year. Uh, but then at the same point in time, I'm like, man, it feels like we've been kind of dating forever. <laughs> so uh, this episode, I want to do something with you. What I We kind of brainstormed a little bit. We wanted to do something special for our one year. Maybe just come on share some uh, a little bit I, I kind of put it in the three different buckets so I said uh, I wrote down notes for what did I learn about you over the last year and maybe how that's helped me learn something about myself um, things that we do that work for us so that maybe if anybody else is out there struggling with some of the same problems uh, they could try to do some of the things that I think have really worked well for us and then I also think bring some humility into it uh, what we're still working on as well because like We've come a long way in the last year, but at the same time, like we have so much more to kind of fix and solve and maybe fix isn't the right word, but like things that we want to improve on. Um, so I, I just kind of broke down those three buckets and I think maybe we just uh, jump into any and everything. So how about we start with something um, that I was thinking about for this episode. So we'll, we'll go back to day one, whenever I asked you out. And um, I started telling some of my friends and a lot of my friends uh, asked me like, what has changed? Because as you alluded to, uh, we had some history before then, we've been best friends for 
almost the past five years now, but at that time, like four years. And uh, we were kind of dating slash, I don't know what we were doing. We were in limbo. I think, I think that's what the young people call talking <laughs> now. Talking, talking, yes. We were talking for like, I don't know, a year and a half before we actually made things official. So in your eyes, um, do you feel like anything changed that day whenever we did actually make things official? I mean, definitely. I think you needed the time. So I think for about a year prior to you asking me out, I really consider that we dated for that year. Like that was us like trying to stumble through. How do we interact with each other? How do we talk to each other? How do we play those roles of like being partners for each other? And so I think you needed that little test run for like eight months ish. Um, to kind of figure out, like, would this work? Um, how are we going to interact with each other? Like, is it going to change our core friendship? Or I think what ended up happening is it built on that. And now we have this base of like, yeah, we knew each other for so long and learned all about each other. And then now it's like we can build off that and like build a life together. So I think um, I think the time was good. And I think the thing that changed was once you just asked me out, we kind of both committed and went for it. Yeah, I I think I would agree with that too. I think, um, once again, I told a lot of my friends and they all were like, okay, were you guys not dating before then? Like, what's new? And, And honestly, for three to six months, like I was just like, nothing really is new. Like we put a title on it, sure. Um, but I didn't really feel like our relationship at all really changed. Uh, but now looking back on it, that was definitely the demarcation point of our relationship where like things went from, um, we were both living independent lives kind of letting each other be in each other's lives, but, you know, on each other's own terms and however best suited us individually. And then that was the point that I started to think about us together and realizing we moved from independent to co-committed. And there's a big difference, I think, between that piece to it. So like, I thought like, now I actually have to think about some of the, some of the things that I do as an individual um, and kind of like just forward thinking, like I have to think about you and a lot of those decisions um, versus, like I said, when we weren't actually dating, I was like, well, it'd be a shame if like, you know, she couldn't go to this new city with me, but it is what it is versus now I'm like, you know, how can we make my next destination or your next destination work for both of us? And that was like the conversation of, whenever I moved to San Diego versus now us thinking about moving to Austin together. It was just like, I'm going to San Diego. Uh, Hopefully we stay good friends. And now it's like, okay, does Austin make sense for us together? I guess. Yeah. For like both of our careers, for both of our futures. I totally agree. I think, I mean, even though there's a difference between a title and how we behave. And so I think we started behaving in the ways of considering the other person more or being that partner or that rock, you know, if something bad would happen or if you were going through a tough time with work, instead of like earlier, it was kind of more like, okay, well, I'm here right now. So let me like comfort you and then, you know, call me in a week. But then it's like, oh no, like I need to make sure I'm here for you and you're here for me every day in and out because that's what we committed to doing. Hmm. Yeah, totally. Um, Okay, so let's jump into some stuff. So what, uh, maybe we'll start with the first category. Like, what was something that you learned about me the first year that we were dating? Okay, hold on, though, because (laughs) you told me on the prep questions, it was what is something I learned. Okay. So I prep for what is something I learned, not what is something I learned about you. Okay, that's kind of what I meant. Maybe, yeah, what did you learn from the first year of our relationship? Okay, because I wanted to highlight um, a principle that I learned from even before we dated that I think is like just a good piece of advice for people that I don't think people get very much. So my thought was something that I learned was always put in 10 times the effort, even if you're not going to get that in return Mm. and don't expect to get that in return. Maybe is a better way to put it. Mm. Um, Because I think back to when we weren't dating, when I was just, I guess, pursuing you and I would write you letters talking about how I felt about you. I would um, come visit you anytime that I could. Like, even if it was like for a weekend, I would like fly across from New York, California to see you. Um, And I just always put in so, so, so much effort. And I had no idea if that was actually going to lead to a return or not. I was just doing it to show you how it like how I felt and that I cared. And so that like having that base for us, at the time, I was just doing it because like, I'm dramatic and I do things full, full fledged. So I was like, 
whatever. If I'm going to like talk about how I like him, I might as well go all in and get him presents and all this stuff. But now that we are dating and it's less of me trying to prove something to you and it's just us being together, I still have that bedrock of like, how can I go and do an extra thing for him? What's a little extra mile I can take? And like, how can I support him a little bit more? And those little things are like so key. They're everything sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, to comment on that, it, it's something that I I really, really like about you. I mean, an earlier Justin wouldn't have necessarily adored that kind of trait or characteristic in, a, in somebody like uh sure everybody wants to be chased um but like you also at the same time you want the things that you're not like you can't have but now i want to be in a relationship where that person wants me just as much as i want them yeah uh and maybe that was some of my fault in some of my previous relationships where like i expected you know i might have not been treated the way that i treat somebody as well uh and then you came into my life and you showed me like you treated me like I treated a lot of my previous relationships and then I kind of brushed it off for a little bit and then kind of chalked it up to like, um, like, oh, this is just like temporary. Like a phase. She, yeah. This is what he said. Gabby, you don't like, you don't like love me or anything. This is a phase. You're just interested in me right now because I'm new and exciting. And I always said no. Yeah. I said, no, no, no. This is not that. And then like, you know, four and a half, five years later, you were still putting in like 100% effort. And now a year later after that, like you still put in mm -hmm. a ton of effort. Like it's really cool um, to have a partner that tries really hard. Like I, I really appreciate that about you. <laughs> um, okay. So how about uh, I'll start kind of next things because we're going to get too deep into that yeah, topic. Yeah. <laughs> um, the thing, one thing that I really noticed about you that I didn't necessarily notice about you prior to us dating was you want you want some spotlight just as much as I want some spotlight. Like I always thought of myself as like very like achiever yeah yeah like halfway center of attention but like always kind of really thinking um i, I don't know it, it's hard to explain there but like I, and i always felt like you pushed me in the spotlight a lot or did anything that I, you could do to support me to like earn my spotlight yeah and then i realized that like you have amazing talents as well um and that you want to showcase those talents so like i have to a lot of times maybe take a step back either through conversation like if we're out on a double date with somebody i need to you know take a step back and stop dominating the conversation so much and like let you shine or like we, we're both really good about like kind of bringing each other up now like oh did you see, like gabby has been working on this awesome photo series like gabby you got to tell them about it you got to tell them about it and you'll do the yeah. same thing too especially things that we're insecure about too like whenever i first started the podcast um and still now too sometimes like you're always kind of pushing me like oh, I know someone that has a good podcast on that topic where like I would never chime in and say that about myself. So it's it's been an adjustment uh, to say the least, but like really interesting for me to start working through like how can I support you and your spotlight dreams as well as like you always supporting me in my dreams as well. Yeah, I think this definitely falls under something that we're still trying to figure out a balance for um, because you're totally right. When we were, even before we were dating, I was huge on like, oh, this is your career goal. This is your aspiration. Like, let me do this graphic design for you to help you with this thing. Let me help you make this video. And I was like, how can I support you so that you know that I totally am going to be there and support you like 100%. Um, but now that we're dating, you're totally right. We're, we are more into the routine of our careers and our lives. And you're seeing, oh, wow. Like, you know, you know that my photography and my, my artist career is super important to me and I work on it 24 seven. It's my whole life right now. And so it has been cool to see you be like, oh, okay, well, you're helping me make this video. How about I help you do a strategy call for where your photography business can go? And so I think when you have something where you can support each other in your careers, that makes everything else more stable and secure too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's one of those deals. Like, um, you want to make sure that like you're your biggest you're your partner's biggest cheerleader like that is so important I, I don't know any relationship that like I don't that statement doesn't serve the relationship like anything and everything like you're going to be the coach the the cheerleader the counselor like you should be the number one in all those areas for your partner if they're going through a tough time they should be they should want to come to you first for for consolas 
of consoling. Yeah. Um, if they're really excited about something, you need to reflect that energy back and get excited about it with them. Even though like half the time, I don't even know what the hell you're talking about with yeah. like some of your photography stuff. Like you'll show me a picture and like, I'm like, I don't, sometimes I don't really understand like how it's different or what yeah. it looks like, but it's, but I just know you're really excited about it. So it doesn't matter. I'm going to act excited about it. Yeah, and I think that sounds really easy when you say it, but that can actually be something that can be super hard to do. Like one example is, so you have been practicing guitar, you've been learning how to play, and you typically do in the evenings. And it typically ends up being at a time where I'm like checking some emails, editing photos, and sometimes I'm like, you know, I don't want to focus on this right now because sometimes you ask me, oh, come play a song with me or come, you know, let's walk through these chords together. And it has to be a thing where you have to go, okay, I have to be intentional right now about changing my mood and going and focusing on that because I know that's really important to my partner right now. And so even if it's 10 or 15 minutes, that that can be a huge change to just invest that time and emotion to share that moment with your partner. Hmm. Yeah, that's a really good example too. Um, because you're right, you're usually on the couch hitting out, bumping out emails, and I'm always bothering you. And I don't mean to. Uh, but I started learning guitar because of you. Like it like, uh, the only reason I want to learn guitar and get good at guitar is because I visualize us both playing a song together one day. Yeah. Like I, 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 I'm not really that interested in music. Like I don't see myself on stage. I don't see myself writing my own song. Like, and, and you have to have a vision or like some kind of goal with every skill you learn, uh, so that it keeps driving you. And mine for that is just like you and I jamming out together, uh, playing a song together, just having a good time. So yeah, like I always want to share in, uh, that skill with you a little bit and like make sure that like you're at least involved in my journey and my progression in that a little bit. Yeah. Um, okay. So flip over to you. Anything else on that topic? Something that you've learned? Uh, let me try to just ad lib something I've learned about you. Cause I actually like that question. Um, I've learned, oh, I've learned so many things, but I, one thing from living with you, and I even kind of knew this a little bit when you lived in San Diego, just from spending so much time with you. But you are just so OCD and set in your ways with <laughs> everything. Yes. Routine, the way your clothes are folded, the items in your toiletry bag, the way your bed is made. It's funny because I think people that are friends with you that just see you in a casual setting where you're just having a good time, I don't think people really realize how organized and kind of OCD you are about things, um, which is presents an interesting dynamic because – my personality with that is more like I go by my mood. So if I'm in the mood to clean, I'll clean the whole house like spotless. Mm -hmm. If I'm in the mood to be artistic, I'll destroy the house making art projects. Yep. So, and you are just consistent. You're the same every day. You're going to wake up and you're going to go on your run and you're going to do your routine of like four things and it's not going to change. So it's interesting to see how we mesh and mold depending on, on those, like either my mood versus like your routine. If one day I'm like, oh, I'll go run with you. Sure. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah, it's uh, conflicting and challenging for someone that loves structure versus somebody that loves to, you know, let her heart or her energy bring her wherever that day is. Yeah. Uh, how have you adopted to that piece? Because as you mentioned, we've been pretty much living together for the last like four months at your parents' house, which is super interesting through yeah. through COVID. Um, and we're about to move in together, which uh, I'm not too worried about now because we've spent like the last four months, you know, with each other. But how have you adapted to the structure that I need versus the freedom that you need? I think if anything, your structure has probably provided like some stability to my <laughs> day. Like I would never make breakfast before you, but like breakfast is a big thing that we do now mm -hmm. and just little things throughout the day, you know, like, Oh, you want to meditate with me? Oh, we can read our books together. Little things like that have been nice moments for us to, to share something together and also knock out something that's on our to-do list too. Yeah. Uh, it's probably harder to go back the other way. I think it's easier for you because I'm, cause you mentioned I'm predictable, you know what I'm going to do. Yeah from 7 to 7.25, from 7.25 to 7.40. Yeah. All, you can pretty much tell me if, if you have an hour, uh, you know, if it's 10 or 11 or 12, like you could tell somebody probably what I'm doing at that point in time in the day versus yeah. for me, if I wasn't around you and you didn't tell me, 
I probably have no idea. I could probably just have three guesses of what she's doing, and they're what probably the, all wrong. What are, no, no, no. Let's, what would the three big guesses be? Uh, you're probably editing photos. Uh, you may be editing photos or cleaning up email in front of the TV, yep. watching some kind of Netflix show, or you are probably thinking about or working on some kind of photo project. Like probably. it's like one of those one of those deals. Or you're probably sending like a hundred emails to some to people on some kind of like new project that you're into at the time, and that's like I said, it's almost harder for me to adapt to you because I don't exactly know what you're doing. Uh, but I've had to get, uh, I've had to realize that I need to be independent sometimes, especially early on when we first were together. Like yeah. it was like we, I wanted you to do everything with me, yeah, and I wanted you to tag along in my structure, but yeah. like you just hate routine and hate structure in that sense, yeah. Um, but I, it's always nice whenever you do join in on a run or something, cause it brings a little bit of spontaneity to my day. So like the mesh of both of us, like the hard, uh, OCD type versus like the hard freedom of my day type, uh, the blend of both of them has brought some of the best in each of those each situations. Of us, yeah. yeah. Cause like, I, I love that. Like sometimes I don't exactly know what I'm going to do at 5 PM at night because, you know, you might drag me into something or yeah. uh, I once again, I bring a little bit of stability to you as well. For sure. Mm. Um, and I'll riff on one more topic on things that I've learned. Okay. Uh, we'll bring up an easy topic for the guests to understand. And that's love languages. Yeah. Um, I would love to get your thoughts on love languages because I don't know if you necessarily had my love language pinned down. I think you realized what it was. But now that we are together almost every single day yeah yeah you really do realize that and i realize like i thought yours was a little bit of quality time before and now i realize it's not a ton of quality time like you would much rather and i've known you've always said words and and granted you're good at every love language like you really are um but i thought you were a little bit more quality time than what you really are because like we had some really great moments together throughout the you know four years or so but now i've realized that's just because you were excited to hang out with me because you probably hadn't seen me in two or three weeks <laughs> yeah no for sure one really interesting point i think i might have wanted i think i had this on my list to talk about for the next to- section but when we were long distance and yeah i was so excited you know maybe it's like the one time in the month or two months that i got to see you right and so we spent like 24 7 together when we were hanging out But then we would go back and you would be in San Diego and I would be in New York and we would talk on the phone every single night, which was awesome. But then the rest of the day, I just got to do my photo shoots. And that's one thing that is kind of we, I think, still have to figure out a balance on is like, I really, really like the freedom to do my own things and especially work on my photo projects. And I want to hang out with you like every evening, but I also really want to go do my art projects. And that, I think that's been an interesting thing of like, we realized right when we moved in at quarantine that like you were like, oh, come to the gym with me. Oh, come do this with me. Oh, come do that with me. Let's do it together. Let's go on a walk together. <laughs> and I was like, no, I'm going to sit here and work on this project and you go for that walk and we'll mm. meet up in 30 minutes yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I'm hardcore quality time, hardcore physical touch, which uh, – I actually you... don't think you're that bad on physical touch. Yeah, yeah. I guess so. Yeah. Um, but I just like to be around you, I guess. Yeah. It's, it's almost a You want to like sit next to me yeah. constantly. Yeah. It's like a blend of quality time and, and physical touch. Yeah. And we define quality time differently too, which Correct. has been a struggle for us too. Yes. Like your quality time is you with a laptop watching Netflix next to me, but I see that your head's down bumping out emails, not even paying attention to the show and like sharing that <laughs> moment with me. Yeah. That's not quality time for me whatsoever. No. Uh so we've had to find that balance too of like you realizing what quality time, how I define quality time and what that really means to me and me giving you the space throughout the day in order to allow yourself to give me quality time later in the evening. Yeah. Uh, and I think we're getting better. Like I said, I go through my routine now, but as soon as I'm done with my routine, I'm not someone that really wants to relax and like put on a show or something. Yeah. Like if you're around, I'd rather just go and hang out with you. Yeah. <laughs> like that's that's my that would be my preferred recreational time, I would say. Yeah, and your your quality time, like you were saying, like it's an engaged quality time. So it's like we are doing an activity together. We're making dinner together without our phones. We're throwing the baseball outside, talking about how the day went. It's definitely like you and me are locked in. That's 
that's how you're getting your love language. Mm -hmm. Whereas like you're saying, yeah, like if you were just next to me and there was like a movie on and I was actually editing photos, but like I still have you there, I feel comforted. That's enough for me. Yeah. So we kind of try to find a balance now. It's like, all right, let's go to, we'll go throw baseball for 20 minutes. You'll get some energy (laughs) out and then we'll go watch like an episode of Avatar and then I can, you know, answer a couple of emails before bed. Mm -hmm. And that's fair. That's fair. Um, Okay, cool. What about things that you want to do things that work for us next? Or would you want to do things that we're still working on next? Um, let's do things we're still working on. Okay, perfect. Um, and maybe we'll segue in with that last piece to it as well. Because I think you're beginning to adapt really well with my love language. I'm still really working to satisfy some of your love languages. Like the biggest thing that I'm still working to reprogram is words affirmation. Like it is just not me, like not me whatsoever. Um, But we have found, we found some um, things that satisfy that without making you verbally say words. Definitely. So this might, this might blend into that, this other one. So let's, let's, let's tackle it from your perspective. Like how do I satisfy your love language? Right. So words of affirmation is my number one by far. My parents told me they loved me and verbally told me and my brother every single day, you know, oh my gosh, Gabby, that photo project is so cool. Oh, have a great day, Gabby. I love you. Writing notes in my lunchbox. Like it is just how I perceive love because it's so ingrained into how my family communicates. Mm -hmm. So meeting you and knowing you was wild at first because when I learned that your family doesn't use any words of affirmation ever, except, I, mean, I don't know, maybe in extreme circumstance. I I don't know. Basically never. Um, we were like, how are we going to figure this out? Because at first you didn't feel comfortable even really talking about words of affirmation. Now we're in a good place. We're a lot more stable now, obviously. Um, but yeah, so some of the ways you've gotten creative. Uh, writing me letters. That was great whenever we were long distance because I would get a little present in the mail too. Um, writing, uh, post-it notes. We, we both do that to each other. We leave post-it notes for each other, which is really cute. And Mm. like, is a little surprise that like makes you smile throughout the day. I usually leave yours on your water bottles. Mm. You leave mine everywhere, really. Yep. Um, you will leave, you will write me like an email, like a virtual letter, or you will a lot of times, um, steal my phone or my computer and write something on like a notes app. Yeah. For me to read. I did that today. You did? <laughs> did you do that because you knew we were recording? No, actually, no, not at all. Uh, I don't know. We just had a good lazy morning. So yeah. I just wanted to verbalize that because I know I'm beginning to train myself to at least do little things like versus me having to like have a big talk with you yeah. and tell you about all my feelings, which you still crave a lot of times. Yeah. Uh, it's easier for me to honestly like – and at first, I, I literally had to put a reminder yeah. in my daily to-do list. Uh, and that, there goes back to my structure. But my daily to-do list, I had a reminder in there that says some words of affirmation for Gabby. And whenever that came up, I would text you or I'd write something to you yeah. or I'd find a way to communicate with you on that. And I found that those little bursts of words is a lot easier for me to do than like me having like us op- – opening up a bottle of wine and just having this really heartfelt conversation. Like, Which I'm waiting for. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know. Maybe on our anniversary. Yeah, maybe. maybe. Uh, but I think also it's a good kind of segue also to mention that, you know, at first I was kind of like, when I saw like, cause you have it in your, your calendar on your daily schedule and stuff. And I'm like, Oh, you like wrote like a note to remind yourself to like say something nice to me. And it was like almost off putting. And then like the more that we talked about it and I thought about it, I was like, actually, this is like kind of the sweetest gesture ever because like, even though it's so uncomfortable for you and like so far from what you would naturally do, like you knew it was important to me. So you like put it into your daily plan to do that. And so for people that have love languages that are different, I just think like, even if you do have to almost force a habit at first like I think that's kind of romantic in itself because of how hard someone's trying Mm -hmm. like the love that people see on tv or in a movie is like oh it it was effortless and that's just not real life real real love and real relationships are the most effort yeah that you can put in a hundred percent and that's I guess that is circling back to like the original thing that you talked about is like it is so attractive that you put in effort 
Uh, and it, it doesn't matter. Like if you verbalize that you want more of something for me, my problem solving brain goes right away. Like, how can I make sure that I make this a prior- priority? And for me, whenever you told me that you needed more words, it was like, I'm just going to put it in my daily, my, my daily to do list so yeah. that I remembered to do it the same reason, like, um, you know, around, I realized how important networking is and just staying connected with people. Yeah. So I have a top, I have a hot 100 list of people that, you know, could be good friends, people I worked with, uh, people that I met that I really want to get to know more. And I want another thing in my to-do list is to just reach out to one of those people every single day. So about once a quarter, I circle through my top 100 list and I make sure that I'm staying connected with the people that matter most to me. Sure, some people might not like the the systematic approach to that. Yeah. Um, but that's better to me than forgetting about that person entirely and then being like a year and a half from now being like, holy cow, I wonder how blah, blah, blah is doing. Right. Like I should text him. So so I guess it's like my way of solving that problem. For in sure. That sense. Um, cool, cool. Yeah, I, I agree with that. One thing that I'm still working on with my structure and my routine, uh, which is great, like that's amazing. Most people talk about like the importance of morning routines or evening routines or the consistency day over day. Like it's winning every day. It's not winning right. Winning big one day. It's winning yeah. over small time. every single day. Uh, <clears throat> but the problem with that sometimes is you get into routine, which can really like erode a lot of the spontaneity or creativity or yeah. romance. So something I'm still working on with you is pursuing you every single day, like pursuing you because everybody wants to still, wants their relationships to still feel like the first four to six months that you're in a relationship. Yeah. So for me, it's like, how do I continue to, you know, continue to pursue you? Uh, and one thing that's worked well with us is some kind of like weekly date. Um, like it's, it's just figuring out like, when's the time we can connect? A lot of times I like to just look at my calendar and find like, where can I turn something into a date? Yeah. Like, um, I haven't asked you yet, but like this next week I really want to do, um, I, I really want to wash our cars together because we mentioned about <laughs> yeah. washing our cars. I finally got my car back from San Diego and unpacked. Uh, and I was like, you know, that would be a really cute versus me just having to go do that. I my own. that would be a great date idea for us because uh, I'll probably spray you with the water. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and we can both accomplish something that we want to do. And make it fun. Uh, but make it fun as well. Yeah. And it's like half the time it's just labeling it as a date. Yeah. Like, like uh, other date nights we've done or like date ideas, I guess, to say, um, are we hung out on the trampoline and looked at the stars? Um, what else have we done? We gone gone dinner to go yep. since we're in quarantine right now. You know, pick something up and make a little picnic. Um, wow, I thought I had a lot more ideas. But now <laughs> I'm blanking. Yeah. Just little things. Like it, it doesn't have to be a two hour thing. It can be 30 minutes. It can be 15 minutes. It's writing letters to our future selves. We did that one time. Yep. Um, so yeah, I think you're totally right. One thing I love about, um, the date, the date concept, I guess, is bef- sometime that week before the date, you'll ask me on the date, either verbally or you'll write me a letter or, you know, send me a calendar invite. So then I'm like, ooh, he planned a date. That's fun. Um, And then you will typically do something to, like, get me excited about the date before the date. So either, Mm -hmm. like, we'll talk about, like, oh, we're going to do this on the date or, like, we have to wear this for the date or, you know, whatever. um, To kind of, like, get some anticipation going. And then the date itself, and it's usually super fun at that point because you've been, like, thinking about how fun it's going to be all week. Um, And so I think those those are good strategies for, like, keeping it fun and exciting because we take a little thing which might just be like going outside to like have a glass of wine or something and we make it like this really fun thing that is super exciting and everyone can't wait for and I think that adds a lot of playful energy and excitement to to the week Mm -hmm. definitely um yeah and I really appreciate that piece to it too because like I said everyone wants to be pursued and I also enjoy pursuing you as well like and it just brings some fun to it and it's not hard like it's maybe an extra 15 minutes of effort to think about like either write you a note or send you a cute text about the date asking you on a date um and then usually some kind of playfulness of like oh my gosh are you gonna say yes kind of deal and then you always say yes which is nice (laughs) Uh, I have to say no coming up now (laughs) and then um yeah I always try to plan uh sometime on the date day 
something to get a little bit of excitement around the date too. So yeah, I echo what you say there. Um, what about what else do you think we're still working on? Um, for me personally, I'm working on like trying to figure out how to balance my value of wanting freedom, like freedom to have the day free and, you know, organize it how I want or like freedom to plan all these photo shoots and, and just execute them wherever they are or like that, all that kind of like going along with my creative energy. And I think we're getting better, but I definitely think that when we first started like living together, it was like, I feel like I, my creative freedoms and just my freedom in general of like, if I want to binge Netflix on a Sunday for eight hours while I edit photos, like I felt, I think a lot like, oh, I can't really do that. Cause like I have Justin here and like, he probably wants to do something or like, he's going to judge me for like being unproductive and that kind of stuff. So I think when we move in, in together in Austin, we can like really work on finding that balance of like, I feel like I have my time to do my personal stuff and my professional stuff, but then also we're making time as a couple too. Yeah. Yeah, interesting you bring up the fact that I would judge you for being unproductive. Uh, mm. And maybe I would have. And um, I think that's interesting to dive into a little bit. Yeah. Because maybe you would get that perception. And I think some people, um, especially when I'm around people, like people might eat a little bit healthier or yeah. they might be a little bit more productive or something like that. And, you know, that partially be might be my fault, um, bringing judgment on people. And hopefully I do elevate you in a sense, um, but I would never want you to feel like you are being judged for the actions. Because now, especially living with you, I realize you need downtime in order to recharge. Yeah. yeah. And, like, talk about productivity. Like, I super admire you for, like, you get things done. <laughs> um, but you get things done when you're full of energy. And whenever you need the time to take a step back and um recharge the batteries yeah. i think that's important it's funny that you're like oh wow now that i live with you i see how productive you are because i feel the same way i feel like i knew you were like very uh outgoing and like achievement focused but like you're very hardcore like always all day every day like you work out twice a day sometimes more than that you always eat extremely 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 healthy like probably like 1% of people eat as healthy <laughs> as you eat. It's ridiculous. And so, yeah, that's super hard because like, I feel like I'm very average in terms of like, I work out like a few times a week, like casually, maybe I'll do yoga. <laughs> um, I'm definitely going to eat sweets and probably mac and cheese. And so I think that's hard because it's like, you're very like by the book. Mm -hmm. And so I think sometimes maybe you don't understand, like you're saying, like, it's like, why are you literally watching these Hallmark movies and you're on your computer? But it's like, that's actually like, I'm letting my creative brain like chill out and kind of just doing some of those mundane tasks so that when my week starts and I'm doing like four shoots a day and it's insane that I have that energy to do that. And I really need that downtime and alone time to like recharge. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I struggled a lot early on with like wanting to push my thoughts onto you. Like, yeah. Hey, let's, let's eat healthy. Let's, but I need to let you get there yeah. and I need you to define what level or what, where the bar is there. Yeah. Um, but I think with, with you, like if, if we're going to tell each other about something that like we really admire, like yeah. I always admire how proactive and right away, like, like if you have an idea you just do the idea then like yeah. for me i come up with an idea i put it down on my list and then from that list i'll decide what i need to do every single day yeah so you're like oh my gosh that's a great idea i should reach out to them and then like not even 30 seconds later you're typing an email and reaching out to someone yeah and i'm like oh that's a great idea i should reach out to him type it into my phone reach out to xyz person okay i'll probably do that tomorrow or the next day or whenever i have time yeah so uh different approaches but um but yeah i think it's just figuring out what you really admire about your partner and like really leaning into that yeah. and then everyone's got faults yeah and you have to decide if those faults are something that really bother you and that you want to communicate with your partner about or realizing like you know what she loves mac and cheese, and I love the fact that you love mac and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> and that actually reminds me of the podcast we were listening to where they said John Gottman, like, interviewed, you know, those thousands and thousands of couples um, and, like, found out that, like, each couple has, like, an average of one issue that they're never going to resolve. So, like, we're talking about small things like mac and cheese, but, like, you know, value differences, like – 
there's probably going to be at least one thing in your relationship where like, we're just not going to agree on it. So Mm -hmm. it's like managing that and figuring out, all right, how are we going to work around this? So we keep, you know, our emotions out of it and keep, um, keep our relationship strong, even though we might not agree on a certain thing. Hmm. Do you have an idea what that one thing might be? You know, it might be kids. <laughs> <laughs> We're not sure. Uh, I know. You really started to change your mind on it the last couple months. Uh, and I love kids so much. Um, I love kids for like a day. I know. But for me, it's like a playmate that I have all the time. <laughs> <laughs> See, that would be like a huge pro is I could be like, all right, kids, go with Justin and I'm going to stay home. <laughs> yeah, because I need a lot of active energy pretty much every single day. This like, would be really interesting. Like, I feel like we'll probably do more episodes like this. Yeah. It'll be weird to kind of be like, all right, well, here's kind of how we feel about, you know, kids in the future and all this stuff right now. And then in like 10 years, look back and be like, how could we have thought that? Yeah. Like, yeah. It's it's not some, it's not a, you know, we'll cross that path at one yeah. point in time, but I think we both agree. Like, it's nothing that we're seriously considering right now. Therefore, right. it's not something that we need to seriously have a conversation about no. yet. And honestly, we're both so... I don't want to say flexible, but like, I think that we could both convince each other, like why we should or shouldn't do it. Like it's going to depend on, I mean, the thing is we're both huge achievers. So like my business and building it, building my brand is super important. You want to have a company one day and have like a hundred employees that are like, you know, cheering for you on a stage. Yeah, yeah. 150 to 200. <laughs> oh, here you know. we go. <laughs> no, no, no. I won't. I won't illustrate that. But so yeah, same. I think it's going to be like, you know, where our lives go, where our careers go is really going to be a huge determining factor. And yeah, I, I yeah, I'd love to have more conversations with people. So if there's anyone out there listening, uh, maybe a couple that started to go through that process and talk yeah. about it. I'm really looking for a couple that's two high achievers that yeah. like have a lot of very, very time intensive individual goals like yeah you running your business me wanting to start a business but at minimum like having a very very um dominant career yeah and and then on top of that like we're just we're so engaged and involved in so many other things like yeah. you have so many issues that matter to you i have so many issues that matter to me also with health and wellness and everything like that we have a full plate almost all the time like i'm not working right now and most of my We're days so are still taken, yeah. um, which is crazy. So I'd love to have a conversation with people that uh, have maybe gone through that conversation and vetted out each other's um, differences because that's that's a big collision. Like, yeah. like that is like if someone does really wants to have kids and someone really doesn't want to have kids, there's not – for me, I can't really think of like a great like middle ground there. No, like, there's like not a creative person, solution. No. One person just kind of like either gets convinced or then or you break up from that. Yeah. But I would specifically like on your saying on the the call to people that to kind of talk to, I would specifically love to hear about, you know, if you do decide to have kids or say you were trying to decide and then you did have kids and you have kids now, how you handled pulling back on your career or those, you know, those other things that you were really focused on or involved in before you have kids and like emotionally how that is. Because I just feel like if I was super far removed from a lot of my creative things that give me a lot of joy, I think that'd be really hard for me to go through. Like, Mm -hmm. I'm sure a lot of moms go through that of like, oh, wow, I have to take care of this kid 24 seven now. I don't feel like, I feel like my identity was tied to being a writer or being this or that. And now you have to relearn that and re kind of find a balance. Yeah. And these are like, so elementary thoughts for me right now. But I'm just thinking about like, when we'd be having that conversation and if I really want to have kids and you really don't want to have kids, I think for, it really comes down to, I have, I want to protect my time and really make sure that I still have enough time to do some of these things over here. So that are, if we decide to have kids, that might be our, our solution might be me having to step up on, this might not be the wrong word and I might offend people here, but the maintenance piece of kids. Yeah. like who gets them to school? Who gets them? Who goes to the meetings that need to happen? Who feeds them? Who cleans up after them? Yeah. Um, I might have to take a bigger majority of that if having kids is really important to me. Because yeah. we both, here's the other big thing, like we both want to be really great parents. Yeah. Like if we're going to have kids, if we're going to have a career, if we're going to do anything, like we want to be Whatever we it. do, we want to do it 100%. 100%. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's where I start to have a little bit of doubt because I'm like, oh man, if I'm going to be a parent, I want to be the best dad out there. Like yeah. I want to be super involved and engaged and always be learning how to be better at being a dad. But that means 
that learning time is going to come into some of the other things that I'm really f- learning about and wanting to progress on. Yeah. So, and like, yeah. I would want to be that parent that like, we're like paper macheing the 3D <laughs> collage, you know, of the planets or DNA, like for science class. <laughs> I, so I yeah, mean, come on, tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> I think our, I think our careers would definitely have to take a back burner. So we just have to talk about, you know, maybe, you know, maybe when we get older, we're going to be at a place where we're like, all right, we hustled for 10 years. I'm kind of bored of that now. Let's just have a new adventure. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know if I'd call kids an adventure, but I mean, they are definitely an adventure, but they're a commitment for sure. Maybe an investment. Yes. (laughs) Okay, cool. Um, That was a whole tangent. I did not think we would ever even talk about kids on the podcast, but whatever. Hey, now we have- We have no no actual qualifications to talk about this. (laughs) Now now it's recorded though, so you're right. It'll be fun to look back whenever that time actually comes. Um, Okay, last thing on my list of things that we're still working on is- um, being able to say no, but thanks for asking. Yeah. Uh, this is really big and something I'm still trying to learn is like, and and maybe almost more you too, because I think I demand more of you than you demand of me. Mm. Um, but being being able to gently put down me and be like, no, I don't have time to go swim right now. Yeah. I really want to focus on this instead. Yeah. Or uh, vice versa. Like it's, you know, I, I think we're always asking each other things. Um, and I'm trying to get better at like not taking offense to that, yeah. especially with me loving quality time. Whenever you tell me no, sometimes, especially if it's it's an activity, um, my initial reaction is is hurt. Burned out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're my best friend, so like I want you to always like be doing these things with me, right? Um, and so that kind of bums me out, but like we're still working on that, and I think we're trying to be a little bit more open about it. Like, hey, uh, we talked about. Um, defining the words you know two of our favorite people uh tom and lisa bill yeah uh, which have an amazing podcast too if people don't know impact theory they should check it out and but they have a podcast called relationship theory which um they don't produce any more episodes of but you can go find their episodes and it's they're still good to listen it, to it, that i think that leveled up our relationship for sure yeah um, seeing like two high performers being in a really successful relationship for like 20 years we're like oh okay we can do that yep uh so one of the things they talk about is defining the word important um so that whenever they the other person uses the word important they realize that's a red flag to them drop everything this means a lot yeah like he tom always brings up the example if i'm in the if i'm in a meeting with the president and lisa calls me and tells me something's important i leave that meeting and i and i go attend to to lisa um and then they also have the word defined meaningful which is like a step down from that like this means a lot to me and i it's not life or death like important is yep. but it's like right under it yeah but like you should try to do everything you can to to you know be here for me in that yeah. so i think that's kind of important or that that's been impactful for us of yeah. being like hey i only have an hour today to give to you what where what's the best way for me to spend that hour with you yeah uh and then the other thing that um this was your idea and something you've talked about um in a different part of our relationship right now but i think it's applicable to any part of our relationship is the rule of not saying no twice yeah um so if you said no to me yesterday about throwing the baseball and today i ask you to do something outside for 20 minutes um I told him no yesterday. I have the time now today. Yeah. I should do my best to try to say yes this time. That's funny that you picked up on that because I said that as an off-ed comment one day. Like I just said like you said something like, "Oh, I won. I got we got to play baseball today. I was happy because I won this one." And I said, "Yeah, well, I said no yesterday, so it was like important for me to say yes today so yeah. that you you'd have that." So it's funny that that like is something that resonated with you because I do try to use that internally like Okay, I want to make sure I'm giving him time. I can't do it always, but kind of going off what you're saying on um, no, no, but thanks for asking. It's really hard for me, I think, sometimes to say no because I just want to support you and I kind of want to do everything that I can for you. And so when you, I think you also maybe offer more than me. Like you, you know, probably once a day will be like, oh, you want to do this with me? Can we do this? Can we do that? Whereas like I really only ask if it's like maybe once a week type of thing. Like if it's something I really, like I really need help with this or like, no, I really have to focus on this, like that kind of thing. So um, it's been, I think I'm getting better at saying no, which is, which is good, I think, generally. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And 
once again, just n- for me not taking offense to it and you being capable of saying no more. Yeah. I think we're both working on each piece, each piece of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause I don't, I don't struggle too much with telling you no. And, yeah. and as you mentioned, you don't ask me of too much. And it's like, can we go do, it's usually some kind of creative or arts thing. Take that photos you wanna, of me. <laughs> yes. Um, or do yoga or something that yeah. I would never really necessarily say yes to or seek out. Yeah. Pretty much everything else I'm always down to do with you. Yeah. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of just in business, The I printed this out and put it in my room in New York and it's, if it's not a hell yes, then it's a no. Yeah. And that's just a good principle to have for life. If you're not so excited and like your body isn't like, ex- like outwardly like a oh, who who talked about it, um, in Untamed, she says talk about like feel how it feel in your body, and if you know an idea presents itself and your body is turning inward and it's closing off, that's a sign to know that you shouldn't go lead toward that thing. But if your body is like going out and excited and li- lifted up from it. I think you should do that thing. Agreed. Agreed. All right. So we have maybe about 10, 15 minutes. Um, so let's bring in a few more tangibles for maybe people. I think we've talked about a lot of different things yep. here. Um, but let's round out some other things just kind of quickly that work for us. Um, so we talked about defining terms. I think um, everyone should spend some time defining terms, what no means to them, what important means to them, whatever your words are, words that you consistently use that... Uh, the other person might not fully be understanding. We had to have a conversation about what quality time really meant. Yeah. So when I, whenever I tell you I need some quality time, you know what that means. It's not proximity, it's engagement. Yeah. Um, let's see my other list here. We talked about the weekly date nights. I think that's great. Um, more on love languages. I'm not a big gift giver mm-hmm. at all. My family is not a big gift giver. Mm-hmm. Um you're intimidating because you're very good at giving gifts. You're very thoughtful with me, with all your friends, with everybody. Like you see something um, out and it reminds you of somebody and automatically you think I should get that for them. And then you're great at like presenting the gift as well. It's you, called wrapping. I yes. know, I know. <laughs> but you always like have great presentation with it. It's not always just wrapping. It's, yeah. it's the little things that go to support it. Like there has to be like a theme to it. Like you can't give somebody a spatula. There has to be some kind of like, you know, Cooking kitchen. Theme. Yeah. Yeah. Like you always have something with it. Yeah. Um, so I've really liked that you give to the king, the keys to the kingdom in this sense. And you tell me, uh, you say what you want, like ex- in a lot of areas, but gifts, especially you tell me exactly what you want. We- and I think this is kind of on the thing of like, where earlier I was talking about how like, initially, someone might be like, Oh, like that kind of ruins like the fun of it. But I actually think like, why not just like tell the other person exactly what you want in the relationship? So yeah, for birthdays, anniversary, I'll say, okay, well, I want a necklace that says Gabby or for my birthday, I want a pink dress. (laughs) And then you go, okay, I can do that. Mm. So you know what you're getting next week then, huh? I think it's a necklace that maybe says Gabby. No. (laughs) You guessed basketball this morning, remember? (laughs) You, You don't know what you're getting though. No, I never know. And you want to know something crazy? What? Um, I had this thing made before we ever dated oh, man. like years ago and i've been waiting so long to give it to you oh man it's very exciting oh you're just gonna tease it out like that yep hmm. well, maybe we'll we can put it up you can throw it on instagram once you get to open it it's, it's instagram worthy oh my gosh yes okay okay we'll put it on instagram if anyone's listening and, nice. and it's curious what actually gabby got me so um cool what about uh you have any more ideas for things that work for us playful oh playful nice you want you talk on that so we act like children when we're together, mm-hmm. like probably 75% of the time, 80% of the time. Yeah, I would say so. In the sense that we literally like call each other burrito. I don't know how that mm-hmm. came. We I don't know where That's that you. came you, from. You always have food nicknames for me. I do. I call <laughs> Justin food nicknames. We literally act like kids. We'll have like roll around on the floor fights. Like Yeah, I like fighting. <laughs> <laughs> um... We'll push each other into the pool. We will literally act like we're seven. Um, but that works for us. So where did that come from, though? Us being... Okay, so we made a list of values of what we wanted our relationship to be like. And playful was number one. Definitely. Yeah, so that was important. Um, and I think this is a good exercise for anyone out there that hasn't done it yet. Any Huge. relationship is... You should do this. And you should do personal values as well. Definitely, definitely. And that's where it kind of came from. It's like, yeah. hey... Um, I always think, I always look at a lot of things like businesses and it's like businesses, 
do think tanks and think about what how they want to protrude themselves to the outside world. They create values and then they state those values out there. Yeah. And then people take that concept into their personal lives and they say, okay, I'm going to create personal values and put those out there and, and write them down. And then we're like, well, let's take that into our relationship. Uh, so we brainstormed. Uh, we brainstorm on this often. often. Um, but we'll you even s- do it for trips. Like, definitely. oh, we want we want these three emotions to happen, you know, on this trip. Yep. Um, and playful was a big one for us. Like we just brain dumped. I, I think we usually we did at the end of last year, mm-hmm. uh, kind of as a, like a you New know year. New Year's resolution yeah. thing. Uh, and we defined like what are our three values for this year. And like we started out with like, hey, here's thirty words combined that we thought of. We crossed some more out. And we got to a smaller, smaller list until we got down to like three things that were really important for us. And playful is number one. And we often think about and talk about how to cultivate playfulness, yeah. which is super important. Um, yeah. And I think that really, really works for us. Like we have so much playfulness in our relationship. It does. And it just makes it, we have fun all the time. We have fun together. We do stupid stuff. We act silly, but we enjoy it. And so that works for us. It's not going to work for everybody. That's mm-hmm. not that's not the dynamic of everyone's relationship. But sure. figure out what works for you. Figure out what values you want to cultivate. And it's crazy how much by being intentional about cultivating it that that will come into your relationship. 100%. Yeah. And as you mentioned, it maybe it doesn't work for you. Maybe it's romance that you want is, right. your, is your number one value. You yeah. know? So me, when I'm planning a weekly date night, I think about playfulness. Like, yeah. And I think about, you know, this upcoming date night well maybe if you say yes um but you know us washing our cars and then i think about how can i put create playfulness inside that so i'm gonna spray you like it's just gotta happen <laughs> we're gonna have a water fight yeah. like probably Ooh, let's what if we get some uh water balloons yeah have, like, a, like a balloon i got some, fight. i have i have some water balloons Ooh. yeah um that'd be fun so um but if it was romance i would look at a date differently than yeah. that um and i could maybe still do that date but i'd think about something romantically uh for that date like maybe we wash our car and then at the end of that we take my car and we drive somewhere to see the sunset yeah. and the new freshly smelling car and wash car and yeah. you know that's how we conclude the date versus yeah. here it's gonna end with us being soaked and jump in the pool and probably jump in the pool yeah yeah so um okay cool i really like that i encourage people to do the values thing if you want to learn a little bit more about that reach out to either one of us and we'll share kind of like our process for the values but it's pretty simple i think like yeah you can throw it in the show notes too oh nice nice yeah maybe i can find um, on your website oh let's drop the website um but uh but maybe i can find the template that we used and and plug it in there yeah there's some uh questions that help you kind of think yeah think it through Okay, I want to run through these last few things yep. here. Um, oh, this was one that we talked about pre-planning on this. Okay. Um, having different interests, but find, finding ways, ways to show, share in both of those interests. Man, sorry, that came out. Um, but we have very, very different interests. Yeah. Uh, I pretty much always enjoy being outside or doing, Rock climbing. or doing active things. You are the farthest from that and prefer all things creative and arts, and that is totally not me. But we still find ways to share in each other's interest a lot. And I think the biggest one from uh, quarantine, do you know what I'm going to say? No. Where we shared in shared interest? I Oh, Marvel. Yes. <laughs> uh, so we watched all of the Marvel movies, uh, all like what, 18 or yeah. 24 or something? It was something a lot. ridiculous. It's like 20, I think. Yeah, we binged like two or three a week at least. Maybe more than that, yeah. actually. Yeah. Um, and it was a great mix because I love movies and I love relaxing and just like laying on the couch. And, and cinema. And you love, yeah, yeah, you like, like understanding, directing, and uh, and I never knew anything about that. I, I actually learned a lot more watching these movies with you. Um, and I like action and like it helps with the playfulness too because afterwards I get to act like whatever Avenger, Avenger I just watched. Okay, that you got to tell them what Avenger you are. I want to be Iron Man, but he's super techie too. Mm-hmm. So that's like the only thing about it that I'm like, oh man, I'm not super techie. Uh, so I think I've come down to the fact that, well, I also really love Loki because I think his We're powers- We're going to cut all of this. I know, I know. I think his powers are all really cool, uh, but he's bad or like- he, uh, just nothing ever came from it. So I, I've settled on Doctor Strange. I think I'm Doctor Strange. It's fine. Uh, but yeah, that was a great example. We found something that both of us are really interested in. We found a middle ground and we did it for like a month. So it worked out. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and last thing that I have here is something that I've been working on. I don't know if I've even talked to you about this. Okay. Um, I've been working on using the phrase... Uh, 
this is a story that I'm making up in my head mm. because not even, you know, we talked about one prior example of like when you say no and that hurts, but lots of different things in our relationship. Sometimes I take offense to and I have to backtrack my way out of it and tell myself, okay, this is a story I'm making up in my head. She yeah. doesn't, she doesn't care about me because of blah, blah, blah. Or she doesn't want to hang out with me right now because of blah, blah, blah. Like I, yeah. everyone scripts these storylines in that builds resentment and frustration towards each other <clears throat> and doesn't give you the grace um, that you deserve because like we built up all of this, you know, all these moments together. You didn't all of a sudden decide. Hate you in yeah. one moment because I have to go do something else and can't hang out with you. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I've found that to be a useful phrase in our relationship. And that's uh, Brene Brown. She kind of, um, that was her kind of idea of that, yeah. that change, shifting the um, way you're viewing it from this is the fact because this, you know, she said this or whatever. And it's like, no way. I'm crafting this narrative in my head to fit my viewpoint. There's other people's viewpoints and just because it's the way I'm seeing it right now doesn't mean it's the fact or the truth. Mm -hmm. So really reframing that. And then like, I think you even nailed it yesterday morning when you were kind of like freaking out. And then I came down and I was like, what do we need to do? We need to get the kitchen ready. And then you were like, well, blah, 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 blah. and then I was like, okay. So then I just left and then you came up and you're like, Hey, no, let's, let's quickly jump into that, sure. that example. Yeah. This was, that was the exact, yeah. exact moment that I, I used this yesterday. Um, we were having some friends over, there's a lot to do. Yesterday, we had some things that we needed to do in the morning. I ran, did some, you know, the some routine. of my morning routine, and then I came in to your bed. You were still on your phone, and I just started kind of talking about some of the things we need to get done before they got here at eleven. Uh, and like, you weren't necessarily in my head. I felt like you weren't really receptive or like proactive. Like yeah. you didn't jump up and get yeah. ready. Uh, and that. I got a little Bothered upset about you. that. Yeah. I went downstairs. I think we started making breakfast. And you started to try to have the conversation with me. Uh, you came down a little after and started having a conversation like, what What do I need to start on? And I was just being difficult. I, I really was. Uh, and I was like, I don't I don't know. I don't think we need to do anything. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and then you're like, well, you told me like these 10 things upstairs that we need to do. And I was like, oh, so we do need to do something and you were listening. <laughs> so I, I was difficult in that moment. And then you, you're like, okay, whatever. Like you got some issue going on. So you walked back upstairs and then like 10 minutes later were just sitting on me. And I was like, and I was just being a jerk. I was like, and I was like, maybe she didn't hear me or like, sure, she does want to help. Like I was yeah. telling myself, you didn't want to help yeah. or like you were trying to sabotage us trying oh to get gosh. ready for this. Like, I don't even know what I was trying to like yeah. it think never about. Looked, it never is reasonable once you look back at it later. Later, you're like, I was being really unreasonable in the moment. Your emotions are there. So you're like, no, 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 no. Yeah. They're, the, they're sabotaging me. <laughs> So yeah, that was like one of the most recent yeah. examples of when I used that. And I was like, walked up, poured myself a cup of coffee, walked upstairs and I was like, hey, and you're like, oh, you want to apologize now you got a cup of coffee in you. And I was like, you're right, you're right. I was being a jerk. Like, we do need to get some things done. Let's talk about what we need to get done. Will you forgive me? So, and you that were- That was perfect. And you were really, really great about giving me- room for that forgiveness as well which was important you yeah. didn't say oh i don't want to deal with you right now yeah. you said thank you for apologizing like i totally agree we're all we're on on the wrong page you allowed me to hey i felt like you weren't listening to right. me and i realized that's what i was telling myself and you, know, you were really great about giving me the grace um to accept that apology and you weren't difficult with me and you weren't like no I don't want to help anymore you just allowed me some room to vent what my th my thoughts were and how my perception was of whole of the whole like hey I thought you weren't very proactive and you didn't really want to help and I realized that's just what I was telling myself like can we try this over and we talked about it and we said okay this is what needs to get done here's the game plan now let's go do it yeah. Um, and so I that think, really worked. Yeah, and I think that's a good sweet spot for us. I think the place where we fall into a lot that we still are working on is like when you maybe realize that you were acting like not being not helpful or being frustrating or something like that, and you realize, oh, I shouldn't have acted like that, but you don't come to me and actually say, hey, I'm sorry for acting like that. And that's when we go into a spiral because I really need to feel like I was heard and like, like you – 
come to me and apologize or say, hey, I shouldn't have said that. Because once you come to me and apologize or say, like, let's talk about it, I feel like I'm really open to being like, yes, tell me how you feel. Let's come to a, like, solution and conclusion. But the middle ground of, like, you're here realizing what happened and I'm here waiting for you to come communicate with me is, like, just, like, a sinkhole. So yeah. that finding that bridge, we're getting better. better. Yeah, and it's that's a lot of reprogramming as well because there's a lot of unhealthy habits there in the past of, like, just burying it even after I realized I might have been at fault. And also just, like, being a bigger person and at minimum just admitting and taking 100% accountability for it and just giving like saying the apology of what you're really responsible for in that yeah. argument and more times than not like i'll apologize and then you you reflect back to me some of the things that you should have done better in that situation yeah like, right away you're like yeah you're right i you know might not have gotten up right in time or maybe i wasn't listening yeah um i didn't want to make you feel like i wasn't listening to you or like i'll i'll reiterate that yeah so yeah a at, at minimum just reflect back what you heard from me like this is what i'm hearing you say yeah i'm really That's sorry huge. about that yeah. so Cool. Anything else uh, you want to talk about on like, you know, our first edition of our relationship? First edition. Maybe we should do it like once a year. That'd be kind of fun. Yeah. May I was thinking maybe every six months or so, because I think in six months um, we're going to have a big life change with, you know, us moving in together and having our own place and whatnot. Uh, you know, after about three or four months of that, I, it might be good to debrief some of the things that are working for us now yeah. uh, living together. So I thought that might be a good touch point for us. Perfect. Let's do it. Cool. Cool. Well, Gabrielle. Thanks Justin. For, <laughs> thanks for coming on the show. I appreciate it. Um, if people resonated with something you said and they want to connect with you, where's the best place for them to reach out? Probably Instagram. I'm a G Dimes on all social media. We'll put it in the show notes. Cool. And that's G D E I M Z. Yeah, M is in magic. Nice. Love that. Well, it's been a pleasure. See you later, Justin. Bye. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening. If you like this episode, make sure to subscribe, rate, and review. If this episode brought value to you, share it with a friend and show love on social. You can tag me at Justin Lee Peters. The link to the show notes is in the episode description, and we'll include all the resources we talked about today. This episode was produced by Gabby Dimeke. I'm your host, Justin Peters. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time in the Sandbox.